Hi and welcome. Today I'm going to talk about three reasons why the Poisson's ratio is not very useful in many cases. And I'm also going to talk about how you can overcome these limitations of the Poisson's ratio that we all learned back in school. So if you remember, uh, Poisson's ratio was uh, developed by a professor back in the day, about 200 years ago, who was a really uh, productive scientist. He came up with all kinds of contributions, as you can see here, Poisson's equation, very well known potential theory, optics, etc. And one of the things he worked out was, of course, the Poisson's ratio. And the, the definition of the Poisson's ratio is um, as written here. It's the negative of the transfer strain to the axial strain. So if you do a tension test, you pull on it, and then you measure these two strains, and the ratio gives you the Poisson's ratio. Um, so it's clearly a very unique property in some sense, it's a material property, my, one might think that's at least how it's typically presented in, in textbooks, um, but it's only for uniaxial loading, right? And uh, it's well known, of course, that if there is no bulk resistance to deformation, the Poisson's ratio will be zero, and if the material is incompressible, the Poisson's ratio will be 0 0.5. So most people say, well, Poisson's ratio should between, be between these two values, and as I will see, show later, that's not necessarily true. So what are the three issues with the Poisson's ratio? The first issue is what strain should you use? This is a ratio of two strains. And this is such a common problem that people say the strain was this. Well, what strain? Because when we talk about polymers or other materials that can be deformed more than 1%, there are different strain measures you can use. You can use engineering strain, true strain, some other strain. So you can't just say that Poisson's ratio is the ratio of these strains. You need to say what strain you're using. And then depending on what strain you're using, you will have a different Poisson's ratio. So, so clearly, it's not really that well defined. So that's a problem. So how do you overcome this? Well, the easiest way is to come up with different Poisson's ratio. One is the true Poisson's ratio, which will be the ratio of the, the logarithmic or true strains, as shown here or perhaps an engineering Poisson's ratio, which is the ratio shown here, or whatever ratio you're interested in. But you really have to say which one you're using because they're not the same, unless strains are really, really small, of course. Um, and if you use M calibration, um, which is uh, it's software for calibrating different material models that we have developed here at the Polymer FEM, you will see that there are different Poisson's ratios that you can plot. You can pick the true Poisson's ratio or the engineering Poisson's ratio, and they will be different. And you can select that in the axis preference if you pick a plot of this kind. So that's an easy way to figure that out. The issue number two with the Poisson's ratio is that Poisson's ratio is not a constant. It's a function of the applied strain. So if you do a tension test on any material, and you take the ratio of the transfer strain to the axial strain, that's not a constant. It will vary depending on how far you pull on the material. So when, when you go to a test lab and they test your material for you, what do you get? Well, Poisson's ratio is 0 0.39 or something. Well, that's just a tiny strain. What is it at larger strains? How often do you actually get a graph or a table that shows Poisson's ratio as a function of the applied strain? Well, and if you did get it, what do you do with that information? Really? That's, that's a, a big problem because what do you, you get this information, but you don't necessarily know what to do with it. To overcome this issue, uh, in M calibration, you can input the Poisson's ratio, first of all. When you read in your experimental data, you say, I have transfer strain, and this is the column of my data file that contains the transfer strain. So you inform M calibration about it, and then in the, the fitness weight tab of the load case setup, you can specify if the software should try to match that. And uh, that's a good idea, right? If you actually measure how much the material shrinks as you pull on it, you can use that to guide your material model calibration. So you don't only match the force displacement stress strain response, you also match the volumetric aspect of the deformation. And that is not just a number now, there will be a function of the applied strain, which is substantially better. Issue number three. The Poisson's ratio can get crazy, really weird, during cyclic loading. And this is something most people don't think about, but let's take a look. Here's some data. This is, in fact, a predictions from a material model that we have developed here. It's the PolyUmod 3 network model, but it doesn't matter. It could be an experimental data. It could be any material model that is not 
elastic. So as soon as you have a viscoelastic or viscoplastic material, you can get really odd Poisson's ratio. So the figure to the left is the stress strain curve up to this point, so it's about 40% tension, and then I unloaded it, and the stress goes down like this, obviously. The Poisson's ratio, remember now we have to say what kind of Poisson's ratio, this is the true Poisson's ratio, starts almost linear, and then it goes up towards, zero, towards 0 0.5, not quite. And then when I start unloading, you can see that this Poisson's ratio exceeds 0 0.5 and it can go larger and larger. In fact, this would have gone to infinity if I were to load it uh, even further in compression, as you can see here. So why is that? How could this be the case? Well, you can look at uh, this. The definition of the uh, Poisson's ratio is the transverse strain to the axial strain. And if I deform it and then unload it back so I have zero axial strain, then if I have any finite transverse strain divided by zero becomes almost infinity, right? could become totally crazy. So the Poisson's ratio is a quantity that can have almost any value during cyclic loading, and don't expect it to be between 0 and 0 0.5. So that's another challenge and issue with the Poisson's ratio. To summarize, the Poisson's ratio always should include the definition of the type of strain you're using. And it is a substitute for measuring the bulk modulus, which tends to be difficult to do. So many people use digital image correlation they measure the transfer strain, they measure the axial strain, they get the Poisson's ratio as a function of the applied strain. To use that, you just read it into M calibration, and you can use that in your calibration procedure to guide the calibration. But the actual values of the Poisson's ratio are not super important, in my opinion. Uh, it is uh, infor useful as a substitute for bulk modulus, but besides that, it's just uh, more information about your material that you can use to get a good material model. If you have any questions, ask them below.